All right. Uh, and for those of you joining on Zoom, thanks for joining us today. Um, I do have your videos and microphones muted because uh, I'm on the Wi-Fi here at the county and sometimes it gets a little shoddy if too many videos are going. So, hi, I'm Katie McCormick. I am the Residential Horticulture Agent and Master Gardener Volunteer Coordinator for Seminole County. What that means is I put on classes for our residents here. I answer phone calls about plant questions throughout the day. And I also train and coordinate our Master Gardener program here in the county. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing our Master Gardener volunteer information session and meet and greet. So I'm gonna be doing about 20, 30 minutes of what the program does here in Seminole County, the requirements. And then I've got some master gardeners here uh, that I wanna talk about the different projects that they do here at the county. I can also talk about those projects if they didn't show up today. Uh, I'm gonna be pausing intermittently to admit people from the waiting room into this class. So if I seem a little distracted, it's because I'm running the classroom here and running the classroom online too. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know as we're going or hold them to the end, either way. So for today's agenda, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the program, uh, talk about the application process for the program, talk about our class schedule, uh, go over briefly some of our volunteer opportunities. And after I get done talking, I also have a job slider that's just going to be flashing different things you can do. Uh, and then I'll cover any questions and then we'll be doing the meet and greet. For those of you joining online, unfortunately you won't be able to meet and greet because you're in the virtual space, uh, but I'll have that job slider going once we get to that point. So if you just wanna stick around and watch that, you can. Otherwise, once I'm done talking, uh, online will be done for today. So I'm part of the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. We're found in all 67 counties here in Florida and other land grant universities in the United States have extension offices in the rest of the United States as well. They wouldn't be part of UF though. Uh, we are a nationwide educational network and we're part of land grant university system. So what land grant universities jobs to, is, is to research more information on ways that we can better the lives of our citizens educate people at the college level on that. So they educate students, you've got your professors, and then also extend that knowledge into the community. So what I do is I'm a science educator, paid for by your taxes to teach you guys everything I know about gardening and everything the researchers can tell me about gardening. Uh, I also call myself a science translator because sometimes those researchers don't realize that everybody doesn't have a PhD in nematology. Uh, and so I break down the information that they're offering as well. The Master Gardeners help with that extension mission in that I'm only one person and we have over 400,000 people in our county. Uh, and so having Master Gardeners that go out into their communities and help extend that information is really helpful to me because I'm just one person. We've got about 100 Master Gardeners here in the county that are active even through all of the pandemic craziness that we've had going on. So they are really valuable in our communities here in the county. <laughs> Uh, like I said, we're part of University of Florida Extension. Uh, this is a partnership between UF and county governments. For me, that means that I have two separate reports I do because all government entities need multiple reports. So I report to the county with a one-page report and I report to UF with a 30-page report. Uh, I also get two paychecks. What that means for you guys is you're covered by both UF and the county if anything goes wrong while you're volunteering. Uh, and we have to abide by their guidelines. We're found in all 67 counties in Florida uh, and most have a master gardener program as well. As a master gardener volunteer, like I said, you volunteer for UF and you volunteer for Seminole County here in Seminole County. Um, I do have a couple of master gardeners that are right on the edge of those county borders. So I think we have one that's an Orange County volunteer that volunteers here and we have one or two in Volusia County too. So. Uh, I'm willing to fudge those lines a little bit if this office is closer to you and your county doesn't mind. Hierarchy, if we're looking at who you contact if something goes wrong, first it's me. Uh, if you can't contact me, you go to my county extension director, and that would be Shane Michael here. Above him, we, he has at UF a department director, and then a IFAS district director, a dean of extension, and then the senior vice president for IFAS, and then the president of the University of Florida. County level, we go from you guys to me, to the county extension director, to the department uh, director, county manager, and then the board of county commissioners. 
Um, one thing I try to remind master gardeners of pretty regularly is I can't advocate for things. I can't tell people to go out and vote for certain things. I can't go to the board of county commissioners and say, hey, uh, our waterways are all messed up and we need to regulate on that. You guys as private citizens, even though you're master gardeners, can do those kinds of things. So sometimes I mentioned that maybe this would be something great to bring up at board of county commissioner meetings, but I can't do that. Like every time somebody calls and tells me that they want compost uh, available at our landfill like Orange County has, that's not something that I can go in front of our government and say I want, but as citizens, you guys can do letter writing campaigns. Um, so in this hierarchy, you guys in some ways have a lot more power than I do. I'm just here to educate. For the vision and mission of the Florida Master Gardener Volunteer Program, the vision for the program is to be the most trusted resource for horticultural education in Florida. And that means that when we're talking to our residents and doing educational events, we are using research-based information uh, in our talks. Sometimes you may have luck anecdotally with things in your gardens that nobody's ever gonna research, like throwing coffee grounds on a sago palm. Uh, and if that's the case and you want to spread that information, you have to start with, this is not research-based information, just what I know from my own garden. Because uh, when we're talking to the public, we want to be as research-based as possible. So we make sure we're not spreading misinformation or maybe information that's slightly wrong. Uh, the mission is to assist extension agents in providing research-based horticulture information and education to Florida residents. So you guys' job is to help me extend my reach out into the communities. Uh, Master Gardeners do that in a lot of different ways, which we'll be going over in just a minute. Uh, but if we're not helping each other reach those educational goals, this might not be the group for you. Um, we do have garden clubs where their mission is just a social aspect and maybe a little bit of helping in the community with fundraisers for scholarships. The Extension Center, our mission is almost entirely education. Uh, we do have plenty of social aspects as part of that because you know we meet monthly and we hang out together, but education is the goal here. And that goal reaches a lot of people every year. So you guys as Master Gardener volunteers are really important in our communities. Uh, this is just from 2019, and these are the contact numbers for the state of Florida. So we had 653 new trainees. We had over 4,000 active volunteers in the state. They volunteered over 300,000 hours of their time to Master Gardener programs throughout the state as well. We reached a whole bunch of people. You can see we got 395,000 that were actually listed. Uh, lots of presentations taught. We've had master gardeners getting continued education. Volunteer training hours were pretty high. Media outreach through social media and video and newspaper was over 10 uh, million people reached. So master gardeners in just the state of Florida do a lot of outreach that reaches a lot of people. And the way we keep track of this is you guys report this in our online system. So once you become master gardeners, you do have to learn a little bit of computer uh, knowledge to be able to report your hours. For statewide activities, um, master gardeners work 18% of the time uh, working in demonstration landscapes, 13% of their time in our plant clinics, 10% uh, kind of wraps back into that plant clinic with answering questions on, in the office on the phones. Uh, we work in community gardens, 6% of the time statewide, 5% are giving or assisting with presentations. We've got 5% with setting up exhibits like our gardening expo that we do every year, uh, working with youth and other programs as well. So this is just a picture of some of our master gardeners at our garden expo that happens every spring, uh, teaching our residents about the differences between different radishes that we harvested that year. For new volunteer training, trainees receive 72 hours of initial training in Seminole County. So we're here in this auditorium or in the Volusia County Auditorium uh, once a week for six weeks from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, getting you guys up to that 72 hours of initial training. The training covers everything from basic botany to lawn care to basic entomology to vegetable gardening, fruit gardening, uh, pretty much everything we can pack into 72 hours to try and get you guys ready to teach other people how to do gardening, we do. Uh, after you've gone through that training in your first year, you're required to volunteer 75 hours of your time to the program. 
Uh, 15 of those hours have to be in one of our help desks, either the one here in the office or our mobile help desk that we have at various garden centers on the weekends. And I expect you to attend four of our monthly meetings. Once you've gotten through that first year, that requirement of 75 hours and the extra requirements of you volunteer in these certain areas, you guys can volunteer wherever you like and you only have to volunteer 35 hours a year uh, to remain active and get 10 continuing education hours. Continuing education hours can be had by coming to monthly meetings. Uh, there are online webinars all the time. Every single county in Florida, I think, is offering online educational web webinars, so those can also count. And I do expect you to attend two of our monthly meetings as well. Uh, so that's our first year and onward. Once you have that Master Gardener volunteer title, you only use it when volunteering. It's not a professional title. Uh, if you are here looking for a professional title, you can get that by going through the Florida Nursery Growers and Landscapers Association. They do a certified horticulture professional uh, certification, and that can be used to advertise on your business. Master Gardener title shouldn't be used that way. You can't accept any payment for volunteer work. Uh, occasionally when we go and speak at garden clubs, they sneakily slip you a gift gift card to like Lowe's or something, and those can be brought back here and we'll use them to buy materials for the gardens at the extension office. Uh, we provide only homeowner recommendations. So um, if a farmer or a landscaper or a uh, pest control guy comes in looking for recommendations, those need to be passed on to the agents because if something goes wrong with your recommendation or maybe you get it wrong or maybe they get it wrong, we don't want volunteers being in trouble with somebody's business. Uh, for homeowners, generally there's very little damage you can do if you misidentify an insect. But if it's a pest control guy coming in with a termite, that could be a problem if we misidentify as termite. And like I said earlier, we provide only university recommendations. So we want research-based information from universities uh, University of Florida first, because we are pretty different from the rest of the United States when it comes to our gardening seasons and the plants we grow here. But you can use other universities if we don't have any information on a topic and it's more of a generalized topic. For our screening policies, uh, we do screen everybody to the basic or green level. So Whenever you guys come for your interview, I'll be making a photocopy of your driver's license. And then we check your name and birth date against databases to make sure you are not on the wanted list and aren't on the sex offender registry. At that point, I shred your uh, copy of your driver's license and hopefully you weren't on either of those and that's the basic screening level. Uh, if you're wanting to work with youth uh, through the school programs, they have their own dividends requirements. So you'll go through the dividends uh, training for them. Uh, if you wanna work with youth through the 4-H program, 4-H has a screening pro program that requires fingerprinting and a more extensive background check. Um, we have a couple of master gardeners that do work with our 4-H kids and we have different uh, clubs and stuff that are always looking for more volunteers as well, but not a requirement if you're not working with youth to go through those extra steps, uh, just a requirement if you are working with youth. Once you are a volunteer, there are a lot of continued trainings that you guys can access as well. So we have counting trainings here. Every month we have two different meetings that are educational. We have our monthly meeting. That's a general meeting for all of our master gardeners and covers a wide range of different gardening topics. We get speakers from UF and other universities to come and talk to us about different cool things that they are doing in their research. We also have a help desk meeting that gets a little bit more in depth on pest, weed, and um, disease control. And we get researchers to come talk to us about things in those topics. We also typically try to plan one to two field trips a year. It's been a little bit weird with COVID the last two years where we go out to either botanical garden or a really cool nursery and uh, spend the day learning in those environments as well. And then we also sometimes have advanced trainings where we have researchers come from University of Florida here to give talks on things like Florida friendly landscaping in your HOA, uh, which they called legally speaking, uh, trees and law, things like that. The state program also has conferences every year. So in odd years this year, we have a statewide three-day conference uh, this year it's going to be online, hopefully in person again next year, or two years from now, uh, where we get speakers from around the state as well as around the United States to come and talk um, about topics that are of interest to Master Gardeners. 
even years, we have regional one day conferences where we meet in one of our uh, districts offices to do a one day conference on different topics. Uh, we also have a southern region master gardener meeting that covers the southeastern United States and an international master gardener meeting as well that covers usually the whole of the United States, but we do get some uh, international travelers too. Uh, those can be in really cool different states, uh, so you get to see other extension offices and other ways Master Gardener programs are done. You also get to learn a lot from people outside of the state of Florida about different gardening techniques and thoughts and information. Other continued training opportunities, the Master Gardener Volunteer Leadership School happens in even years for Florida, it usually is in late summer, and I target two to three master gardeners in our county that are doing more leadership work in the program to go and attend that leadership school. Uh, we do various field days at the research centers. We have research centers all over the state of Florida. Our closest one is in Apopka, and they'll do field days where you can go out and talk to the researchers about what they're actually doing at these rec centers uh, and what they're actually looking at. Uh, Apopka does a lot of ornamental plant material, so you get to learn about caladiums and different interesting new cultivars a lot when we do the uh, field day there. They also do a turf and citrus field day at Citra. Um, so both of those are usually offered once every year or two. And then occasionally the Master Gardener program also uh, puts together international trips. We've had Master Gardeners go with the program to Italy and to Cuba at this point at least while, since I've been working here. Uh, within the program, successful master gardeners are gonna work with me to match your projects to what you're interested in, what your skills are and your strengths. So while I do require those 15 hours in the plant clinic, if you absolutely hate it after you've done your 15 hours, you don't ever have to go in there again. You can do anything else. You can work in the demonstration gardens, you can do school garden projects, whatever you want. Um, make sure that you're doing things that you like to do. I don't want you to be here and miserable. Uh, volunteering areas that you're passionate about. If you love pollinators, we have a pollinator garden and a Florida friendly landscape and a wildflower garden that all require help all the time. We also have uh, different groups that wanna hear about pollinators. So if you just like giving talks about pollinators, that's an option too. And then try projects that are slightly out of your comfort zone so you can learn and grow. Uh, occasionally, if I notice that you're good at something, I'm gonna ask you to do things as well which our expo uh, committee has learned because most of them were press ganged into running our expo every year. So tips for a successful master gardener, make sure that you're talking with me. If something's going wrong, uh, let me know. If you're having health issues, let me know. If you are moving out of state, please let me know <laughs> so that I don't keep emailing you. Uh, make sure you're reporting your time as you do it. I have some master gardeners that wait until the end of the year and they send me into a panic when I realize they haven't gotten their 35 hours for the year and I'm worried that they're not gonna have all their hours. Uh, make sure that you're delivering good customer service. If you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, don't come into the plant clinic and yell at people coming in with their plants. Go ahead and just cancel for the day. We wanna make sure that when people come to us, they're getting that good research-based information, but they're also getting a friendly interaction while they're receiving that information. Sometimes people can be a little bit crazy when it comes to their plants and we just have to take that in stride. Make sure you keep learning. We are constantly learning new things in horticulture. I don't know everything and I'm never gonna know everything about it. So as you keep learning, you're better able to work in your own gardens and help residents with theirs. And make sure you're having fun. Um, one way we try to do that here is we do a appreciation uh, potluck at the end of the year uh, as a holiday party where we give out certificates and we play games and we all eat each other's food um, to help build that sense of community and fun. But we also try to add that into uh, all of the things that we do here at Extension. So you guys aren't bored and sad. Um, and I don't want to go meet and greet yet because I accidentally took out the next part of this presentation. <laughs> do you have any questions so far? Oh, it for some reason skipped half of this presentation. All right. Well, let me open up there. Training opportunities. 
there. I don't know why I decided not to show these slides, but we'll start from here. Nope. I'm going to go to application process and start there. From here. There we go. All right. Here's the other half of the piece. I was like, why did we stop? Uh, so for application process, if you, after hearing me talk about the program, are interested in becoming a master gardener, and going through the training process and volunteering. Uh, you can go to seminolecountyfl.gov and search for Master Gardener, or you can just type into Google Seminole County Master Gardener program will pop right up. Uh, all the information we've gone over plus more can be found on the website there and the link to the application can be found there as well. If after going through the training today, you just wanna fill out an application immediately after I get done talking, Bob Howard, uh, Master Gardener Extraordinaire is in the back with a computer and you can fill out an application today. It takes maybe 10 minutes. Uh, wait for me to schedule an interview day. I have already sent out the first wave of emails to everybody who's already signed up, uh, inviting them to sign up for an interview time. Um, we're gonna be interviewing on November 8th through 11th. Uh, so you've got a little bit of time and I'll be sending out another wave of emails inviting you again. Uh, once we've gone through the interview process, oh, question, can we review the slides through once you're finished with it? Yeah, I'll email this out to everybody. Um, so once you've gone through the interview process, we do have to do the background check on you guys. So I get your uh, driver's license at the interview, we do the background check. And then once I make sure that you aren't on any lists uh, and if you seem relatively normal and like you'll be a fit for the program, uh, I'll call you back to let you know if you're accepted or not. If we get over 30 people applying, sometimes I don't accept people because we just don't have enough seats. Um, sometimes if I just think maybe you're not a fit for the program, it seems mostly it's if you see it seems like you're coming for a professional certification instead of a volunteer certification, I'll tell you to go to FNGLA instead. Um, if accepted, payment for the class is $240 and due by December 3rd. Uh, if you cannot pay the full $240, I do have scholarships available for those that need it. Um, I usually do up to three per year. And that money covers a bunch of books that you guys take home with you. And it covers paying for our speakers to come down and speak. Uh, some of them are driving a decent amount of distance. So we pay for a hotel for them to stay overnight. Um, your mentor will be in contact before the first day of class. So we do assign experienced master gardeners as mentors to our new trainees. And they're there, just there to help guide you into the program, figure out what your interests are, and maybe introduce you to the different um, committees that you might be most interested in, as well as just give you somebody to ask questions of like, how do I log my hours? I forget, Katie went over it way too fast in class. Uh, and when do I actually volunteer as a trainee in the help desk? Uh, once they, we get to class, uh, we're starting January 11th and going through February 17th. Uh, we'll be meeting on Tuesdays in Seminole County and Thursdays in Volusia County. Volusia County just hired a new coordinator, so I'm helping to train her. Uh, so we're doing a two county uh, training this year. And we'll be going 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. with one hour for lunch uh, in the middle of the day. For the class schedule, I just went over that. We do have a lot of speakers from both our offices as well as the University of Florida and our local um, research and education center coming. Uh, so you've got me, Brittany, who's our new coordinator in Volusia County. Um, quite a few of the staff here in the office will be coming and doing part of the training. We also have Dr. Chris Marble coming from MREC. He is our ornamental and landscape invasive weed management specialist. So he's gonna be talking all about how to take care of lawn weeds. Um, we've got Mark Frank, who is the UF botanist and probably the most energetic speaker you guys will ever see talking about plants. Uh, and I'm really excited that he could make it this year because he couldn't last year. Uh, Dr. Adam Dale, who was my graduate advisor in the entomology program, will be coming to talk about entomology. Uh, and Danny Lippi, who is one of 
25 certified mastered arborists in the state will be coming to talk about tree pruning. Uh, so also really excited about that one. Uh, extra notes, it can sometimes get cold in here and occasionally that is not agreeing with me when I try to turn on the heat. So it's a good idea to bring a sweater just in case. Uh, also bring lunch. Uh, we'll have snacks, water, coffee, and tea available, but you guys are on the hook for your own lunch whenever we get to our lunch hour. There are a couple of different places to eat around here if you want to leave for lunch too. Uh, and a general agenda day looks like this. So we start out the morning with a quick welcome Q&A session. Uh, if we don't have a whole bunch of questions and answers, we'll immediately start going into the next part of the lesson. Uh, this is our first day, so we have an introduction to extension, master gardener orientation, and a talk on our nine Florida-friendly landscaping principles for our first day. Uh, after that, most days follow a similar format with a break for lunch between 12 and 1. Uh, and if you guys don't have a lot of questions and answers at the end of class, oftentimes we're leaving a little bit earlier than 4 as well. Some of the volunteer opportunities that Seminole County offers are listed here. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of slides on them coming up, so I'll just skip over that. But we do have a very active program here with a lot of great ideas uh, and a lot of great programs that you guys can get hooked into. Um, other more one-off uh, volunteer opportunities that we don't necessarily have a volunteer force for. Uh, 4-H clubs, like I said, 4-H is always looking for people to come speak to the kids, as well as run clubs. Uh, and we have two master gardeners that are looking into starting a bug club here in Seminole County. So maybe we'll have some entomologists uh, being trained up. Uh, also, kind of one-off citizen science projects come up all the time. Um, this can be anything from going out on a hike and trying to find a certain kind of bug or plant to uh, tracking air potato vines in your neighborhood. Uh, or trying to send in tropical sod webworm if you find it in your yard. We do public speaking at the Extension Center for garden clubs and for local libraries, and I get requests for those pretty frequently. Uh, we also have mobile help desks that go out to our garden fairs in the springtime. Uh, we have mobile help desks that go out to our farmers markets. We have them that we're going to the zoo, although that one ended recently. Uh, and then our Lowe's help desk goes to Sanford and Oviedo Lowe's uh, once a month on a Saturday. Uh, also, if you just like researching and writing, I have newsletters that have to be sent out. We have blog posts and we have Facebook posts that are available for people to write for. Um, that said, like I said, we were going to go over some of those volunteer uh, opportunities. We do have the head of our gardening expo here. So if you want to talk about that. Diane at the back of the room is our expo chairperson. Expo is the largest event that we put on here in the uh, extension office. We plan for it for about nine months. And then we have this big event in February where we have 30 vendors or so, uh, food trucks, educational speakers, all of our demonstration gardens look gorgeous and always need help beforehand. Uh, and all of that is coordinated by Diane and the team of volunteers that work with our expo committee uh, to do that. Demonstration gardens, we have our pollinator garden, which is right out here. Uh, and our volunteers were working in there today. Um, we also have a vegetable garden out back. The vegetable garden is usually a seasonal garden. We get it ready for expo starting in the fall. And then we put it to bed once expo is over in the springtime and we get back up again once we hit fall again. Uh, but if you want to learn how to do vegetable gardening in somebody else's yard, uh, that's open. We have our herb garden that meets every single Tuesday here at the Extension Office. Uh, they meet to weed in the garden and learn about herbs and harvest herbs. Uh, they also do a monthly meeting the last Tuesday of the month where we do, uh, one of the volunteers will do an educational program on one of the herbs. Uh, the herb garden mentor is Basem Hillel. And this uh, whole group is all about learning how to grow, propagate, harvest, and use your herbs in the kitchen and beyond. I will say one of the times that I logged into the monthly meeting on the last Tuesday of the month, the sum was showing everybody how to make pizza. And I was kind of mad that I didn't get invited to the pizza party. Uh, so lots of information being shared there. If you want to get into composting, we have a group that does composting out back in our compost bins. If you want to garden like it's uh, eight, in the 1800s, we have the Museum of Seminole County History right next door and he has a pioneer garden. 
uh, where he's growing stuff year round, some, most of it heirloom varieties uh, or whatever seeds I hand to him, uh, but that's available. We also have a school gardens committee that assists with on-site school gardens. They do presentations for the classes, they do in-class activities uh, and school special events. One of the main things that our school gardens committee does is hydroponics in a jug with students. Uh, in the second year that they did that, they helped over 1,000 Seminole County school kids grow lettuce in a milk jug. Uh, and that takes a lot of help uh, from Master Gardener volunteers to get that done because that's a lot of classrooms. 4-H uh, garden activities. Uh, sometimes we get asked to judge the 4-H kids uh, plants that they're taking to the fair. So you might be called on to judge plants. Uh, we also do mobile plant clinics that I talked about a little bit already. Uh, this is one that we set up out front of the extension office during Expo, but we go out to various places with our mobile plant clinics and teach people about plants. A lot of times if it's at a garden fair, it's more teaching people that extension exists. Uh, they don't necessarily bring their plant questions to a garden festival. <laughs> we also have our help desk here at the extension office. It is open 9 a.m. to noon and 1 to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, so we have two shifts per day, five days a week, and we always need master gardeners to come help out uh, for our plant clinic and help desk. If you like to do more analytical work, we also have soil testing that gets done every Thursday. Homeowners bring in soil samples to get the pH tested, and we need people to actually do the testing. Uh, there is a step-by-step -step guide on this, so you aren't left out to dry. Uh, it tells you from step one to step 20 what you need to do to do soil testing. And this is usually a two to three hour commitment if you do decide you're gonna be a soil tester. For one of the fun things that I do in the program, uh, we do seed savers. So once a year we get together and look at seed catalogs and order seeds for our gardens, uh, which means that we don't all get 250 seeds. Instead, we might get 25 seeds because we've all gone in on it. Uh, and then we meet again to split those seeds up. And once we're done growing them, we discuss how things grew and if we're gonna get those same varieties again next year. So it's a way if you're doing vegetable gardening or flower gardening to save a little bit of money in buying those seed packets initially, as well as socialize a little bit over how things grew and have a common, common plant that we're all growing. Uh, we also do a speakers bureau. So if you are thinking you might wanna give talks to master or to other people in the community, Speakers Bureau is a place to practice those talks before you go out live into the community and give them, and also a place where we can help other master gardeners uh, polish up the talks that they already have. And then finally, uh, one of the programs that I introduced this year is Citizen Tree Pruners. And so with Citizen Tree Pruners, uh, you guys go through extra training on how to prune trees. And then we actually go out and help the cities and the county by pruning young trees so that they don't die. Because most of these trees, once they're in the ground, get very little care or they're getting people pruning them that don't actually know how to prune. And if trees are pruned improperly at the beginning of their lives, they're gonna fail at the mid to end of their lives. So important to get that pruning done and that's why we do that program. If you're looking at all of those programs, you don't like any of them, uh, one of the handouts I had on the front table was the extension roadmap. So when I'm deciding if a program is going to fit in the Master Gardener program, I have to decide if it fits within that extension roadmap. Uh, if it's not providing one of those things in the community to our residents, then probably I'm not going to support the creation of the project because it's not meeting the educational goals that we have as extension agents. The other thing to keep in mind when you are starting a new program is you need to be the one recruiting for it. So I get master gardeners coming to me all the time with awesome ideas that I would love to do. But if you don't have a plan for how to implement it or aren't willing to work with me on how you're gonna implement it, it's probably not gonna get done because I have a lot of cool ideas too and I'm more attached to them. Uh, one of the projects that did have a master gardener pushing all the way was that hydroponics and a lettuce or hydroponic lettuce and a milk jug. Uh, we had a master gardener that was really into hydroponic growing. He experimented and tried out the easiest way to grow lettuce in a milk jug at his house for about a year. And then once he did that, he came to me and he said, Katie, I've written down the steps and I've got the prototype here. I think this would be a great school gardens project. 
and we went to the school gardens committee and trained them how to do it and that's how that program got started it wasn't me researching all of it it was a really passionate master gardener and i just got to say yeah that's great rudy thanks so for new projects you really for me i already have a lot on my plate if you want to start a new project you're the one that's going to be doing most of the work i'll just be supporting you by telling other volunteers and buying materials if you need them bought and with that, any questions? <laughs> so I know that was a lot of information and I also talk really fast. Uh, if you have any questions that you think of later, you're welcome to email me or call me. Um, I am in and out of the office a lot this time of year because there are a lot of conferences and talks that I'm doing right now, but I'll try to get back to you pretty quickly if you call. I'm usually a little faster if you email. All right.